Fiona. So welcome everyone. Thanks for giving up your lunchtime to, to come and, and, and engage in the talk. Um, so I'm going to do a couple of things. Um, talk about kind of the overall kind of national picture in terms of community engagement. Um, but then, you know, talk about some of the policy drivers um, that are driving this whole push for community engagement across, across the university. Some of you might be familiar with it. Um, many of us aren't. Um, so um, also kind of community engagement can kind, kind of be a, a difficult area to understand. There's a lot of terminology. So I'm going to break down some of the terminology a little bit, but specifically talk about what is meant by community engagement, what's meant by community-based research and community-based learning. Um, because in the national strategies, these are the kind of three terms that are, are frequently been, been used. Um, so, you know, this is, is, is not done, community engagement to say at the outside, it's not done without a moral purpose. Um, so there's a clear kind of underpinning pedagogy behind why community engagement happens and how it happens um, in universities. So I'm going to talk a little bit about the um, underpinning pedagogy behind um, the whole push for community engagement. And then move on to talk about the, the science shop approach, which is the approach um, to community engagement, particularly around community-based research and community-based learning that's here at UCC. Um, it's, it's growing and evolving all the time, so um, no worries if people are not familiar with that. Um, so I'll, I'll go through that and explain that more locally would be referred to as the CARL initiative. Um, but CARL is linked into a wider initiative across Europe um, called Science Shops. And then I've um, pulled out some kind of further information resources for you and some key articles, particularly in the area of um, health and medicine, which I thought might be appropriate for, for, for this audience. Um, so, um, so just to give you a little flavour of what community engagement is about, um, um, and here at UCC what it's about, um, one of the CARL partnerships um, a few years ago um, was focused on um, postnatal depression in Ireland. So this is a partnership between um, UCC and Applied Social Studies and Postnatal Depression Ireland, which was facilitated by the Community Academic Research Links Programme here at UCC, CARL. Um, so accumulated, um, the research accumulated a presentation to the Minister of Estate, um, Kathleen Lynch at the time, and one of the issues that came out of, of this student's research was that there was very little um, research around um, postnatal depression and its effect on men. Um, so a lot of it was around women. Um, so subsequently, um, you know, this study highlighted the need to include men in support provision with regard to recovery from postnatal depression. And based on this recommendation, Postnatal Depression Ireland um, wanted to further understand, building on the student's research, the type of service that a man would engage with in terms of supporting um, his wife or supporting himself or his wife going through postnatal depression. So a follow-on study was conducted by two Masters in Social Work students, Aideen Ryan and Carlin Salmon, and they explored lived experiences of men whose partner had a diagnosis of postnatal depression. So the idea behind the research was to facilitate a greater understanding of how men experience um, postnatal depression. So in a sense, kind of the voice of men in, the, in this instance um, was not been heard, was not been recognised. Um, so a further aim was to find out if men felt they had a role in the recovery and maintenance of their partner. Um, so the story told by the student um, and by the participants actually um, was that you know there was a lot of demoralization experienced, um, particularly because healthcare professionals didn't understand the effect of postnatal depression on men. Women are understood, but not on, on men. Um, so there was a lot of anxieties and feelings, which subsequently had an effect then on the partner. Um, so you know the male partner had felt disenfranchised for, from the overall, overall experience of postnatal depression. So the study was really, really important in kind of highlighting the viewpoints of fathers on the factors which impact on their ability to support their partner with, with that condition. So by the students exploring the lived reality, a really valuable and unique representation of the experience of men in this instance was gathered. So a second, a second partnership um, was with the um, Eating Disorder um, Centre in Cork. And it's the only dedicated support centre in Cork for people with eating disorders. So they recognise the really important role that GPs play in the prevention and early intervention regarding um, eating disorders. Um, but they didn't understand the level of knowledge that GPs have about eating disorders, and they needed more detail in regard to their um, training and their education on the illness. 
So a Bachelor of Social Science student as a final year project, Hazel McDermott, she undertook a pilot study to establish the knowledge of eating disorders among GPs in Cork City and County. So the research, research found that GPs were comfortable with their level of knowledge about eating disorders, but many had not received much continuing education re with regard to this. So they were really willing and interested in taking part in further education, um, but it, ha it hasn't been provided. Um, so the GPs were also not sufficiently aware of local services um, which were available to individuals with eating disorders, and the study also identified a number of service gaps and I got a good understanding of GP's knowledge about the type of services that they feel are required. So these are examples of, of community-based re research here at UCC, um, but they're linked into kind of a wider international um, and national effort around um, universities engaging more with communities and you know, reshaping how students teach and learn around community-based learning and community-based research. So internationally, community engagement partnerships for teaching, learning, and research are proving to be a really powerful response to current local and global challenges um, in higher education. Um, so you, you, there's no doubt that kind of higher education, you know, especially in the UK, is a very good example of how the kind of whole economic model has crept in there. Um, less so in Ireland, but increasingly, you know, in these neoliberal times. Um, the, the kind of mission of universities are, are being challenged, and particularly that kind of you know, traditional kind of social justice um, and kind of thorny knowledge and questioning knowledges that universi universities um, advanced are, 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 are somewhat under, under threat. Um, so the Simon Fraser University in Canada, um, in a recent edition of University World News, the president um, of, of the university um, has explicitly um, uh, advanced um, community engagement as its principal opportunity to differentiate its university. So this is an example of a university actually embracing community engagement as a way of defining its mission and its institutional purpose. So the vision in their strategy is to be a leading engaged university defined by its dynamic integration of innovative education, cutting-edge research and far-reaching community engagement. So programmatically this means that Simon Fraser University will be British Columbia's public square for enlightenment and dialogue on key public issues, and to be known as the institution to which the community looks for education, discussion, and solutions. So, um, very similar to the two examples that we just talked about. Um, clearly, these are like really, um, really good examples of the universities being the public square where people come to look for solutions, ideas, new ways of thinking about, um, about problems. Okay, nationally in Ireland, um, community engagement um, has been advanced by the Irish Universities Association and um, a, a, an offshoot of that called Campus Engage, which is sponsored by the Irish Universities Association. And Campus Engage has developed a national charter around community engage, engagement, um, which all of the major universities in the country have signed. Um, so they've signed on and committed to advancing community engagement um, as a, a key part of their, their, their mission. Um, so you'll see our former president signing that um, a couple of years ago. Um, so UCC is one of the first signatories of the, of the charter. Um, so you know, while, while that's all very well and good, um, the question is how do we actually embed this and advance that then within, within universities? And in UCC um, last year, in 20, uh, 2016, um, a staff survey was commissioned to kind of ascertain staff feelings about community engagement, and particularly around um, the barriers that they felt um, were there to, you know, that are preventing the kind of advancement of community engagement within, within the university. So the survey cut across academics, administrative staff, research and technical roles. Um, CAC staff comprised 23% of the respondents, business and law 14%, college and medicine 25%, and staffs about 26%. Um, so we got a representative sample from across the university as best we could. So some of the, some of the key barriers that people highlighted were time. Insufficient time was identified by 58% of the staff as a barrier. Um, lack of recognition. So one of the things about time, just to go back, is that um, often engaging in community-based work is extremely laborious and time-consuming work. Um, so it involves kind of a different way of doing research, a different way of teaching and learning and be quite, like, quite labour intensive. So this is why the issue of time is, is quite prominent there. Um, recognition, 
So in, in the current kind of um, recognition for promotion, community engagement um, isn't explicitly um, recognised. Um, so obviously it's taken into account, but it's not an explicit part of how um, folks are evaluated for, for promotion. So this is something staff thought would really need to be ad addressed and will be a kind of a key um, kind of enabler of, of greater community, uh, community engagement work happening. Um, staff felt there was a need to communicate information on community engagement uh, more prominently and that there was a central administrative role there um, for highlighting the existing good work that's been done by staff across the university. And as you all know, UCC is an extremely engaged university. There's a lot of amazing work happening. Um, some of the, the, the challenges, and rightly identified in the staff survey, is that it needs to be cohered more and communicated more. So really a lot of the work that needs to be done is a public relations exercise, um, which is one thing about communicating to external partners, but also kind of inspiring people within the university that their, their work has been recognised, and this is a key kind of motivator. Um, so there was also a clear sense that UCC needs to have firmly establish community engagement as a valued activity integral to the mission of the institution. Um, so were things like entrepreneurship and innovation and you know, e economic partnerships clearly within some of the strategies are very well highlighted. Um, correspondingly, com um, community engagement, um, citizenship, democracy, these kind of ideals need to be also um, prominent within our various strategies. Um, so staff suggested that there's you know, the kind of fragmented, fragmented nature of um, community engagement at the institutional level and needs more central coordination and strategic support. Um, but that also co coincided with, with a minority of staff who also argued, and uh, quite white, rightly in some ways, that community engagement is also a grassroots, grass, grassroots initiative. Um, so too much bureaucracy might kill it, so you kind of have to have a balance, a balance between the two. So top down and bottom up. Um, but surprisingly, 28% of academics reported as, only, as having engaged in community-based research. Um, so only 28%, and 68% of academics reported that they'd never been involved in a community-based learning initiative. Okay, so clearly there's a lot of room to grow, um, but quite dedicated folks um, involved in community-based research. So the UCC response um, currently um, so led by the University's Civic and Community Engagement Committee, um, which up to now has been known as USREP, um, and don't ask me what that means, but it's something about um, social responsibility in there, but it's now the name has been changed to the more friendly um, University Civic and Community Engagement Committee. Um, so that's going to be the key body that's going to drive um, community and civic engagement across the university is representation from across four colleges and the different divisions within the university. Um, it's, under, it's taken the lead in leading the university through a self-assessment process, um, which was um, supported by the Carnegie Foundation from the US. And some of you might have been at a talk recently with Elaine Ward from, from Carnegie, who came over to talk about the results of the self-assessment. And the self-assessment is kind of, really it's a mapping exercise. It maps the kind of strengths and deficits within the university with a view to a strategy for community and, and civic engagement being, being developed. Um, so currently, at the moment, there are a number of key strategies been de developed. There's the overall UCC strategy 2017 to 2022, um, but cor corollaries of that are the academic strategy. So for the first time um, in the university's history, Carolyn Fennell is leading the, um, the writing of an academic strategy, and there's also a research and innovation strategy, um, um, which traditionally has been there. Um, so these are two key strategy documents in which community and civic engagement can be embedded within and then feeding up then into the wider UCC um, strategy um, 2017 to 2022 and there's a lot of work on their way to kind of make sure that those are happening. So without it being kind of mentioned in the strategic documents it's fairly unlikely that some of those barriers identified by the staff are going to be addressed um, at, at the ground level. So one of the key things um, that Ronan O'Doul is leading is the development with the um, University Civic and Community Engagement Committee is the development for the first time of a civic and community engagement strategy. So um, some drafts of that will, I'm sure, in time be shared with the wider university um, uh, community and your input, of course, will be, be solicited and valued, but it's just to kind of flag that, that that is something that's, that, that's going to happen. So. Um, a, lot of, a lot of the kind of cohering work and the fragmentation, addressing the fragmentation identified, identified by the staff, hopefully through 
um, the development of these strategies will, will be addressed. Okay, so, you know, ultimately, though, kind of success in terms of these strategies, um, as Barbara Holland, who's one of the kind of key writers in the whole area of university community engagement, has said, it's, it, it depends on the strength of alignment between institutional goals and the focus of community engaged action. So, um, so some of the institutional drivers for community engagement that we might think about um, are, you know, they, they range from the very personal to the more kind of st strategic. So ultimately, you know, the success of this really depends on the beliefs of the people involved and, if, and how they value it and how much they value, they value it. So it is, it is quite personal. I like to think of it in terms of kind of, you know, my job is part, I'm in a role, but I'm also part citizen. So I don't take my citizen hat off when I come to work. I very much wear it. And myself as a citizen, and increasingly in the times we live in, I see my, my personal role in work is about contributing to democracy and the preservation of our democracy. And I think in Ireland we have a very good kind of democracy, but it can easily disappear looking at the experiences of some other countries recently if we don't continually mind it and nurture it. And independent of our roles outside of the university, when we come into the, to work, we also must you know, bring, in our, bring in our citizen hat with us. Um, so it's very much about your beliefs, values, your experiences in life that will attract you to this, this kind of work and, 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 want, and want to help drive it forward. Um, and that relates then into kind of the wider kind of civic mission of the work. Um, so it is about democracy and citizenship. It's also about social justice and addressing community disadvantage. Um, these can be very, very uh, important kind of drivers at the personal and societal level. Um, but beyond that then, it's about higher education itself and its mission and its accountability to society um, in that it's, it's, it's promoting a lot of different societal interests. Yes, the economic, but also s social justice and addressing um, equality issues, addressing environmental sustainability, addressing public health and well wellness, which are key societal challenges. So the mission of higher education is very much intertwined with um, this whole area of community engagement. And down into student learning, um, beyond you know, the civic, the personal um, that the students gain from this, it's, it's also a form of applied learning and it also um, really, really helps students with employability skills we want to think about in those kind of more instrumental ways. So these are kind of some of the more important institutional drivers for it. Um, educational outcomes in terms of students in the area of kind of uh, medicine and public health. Um, I was looking at the um, you know, what medical graduates and public health graduates are expected to be able to do, um, and this is coming um, from the Medical Council and the eight domains of good professional practice as divided by the Medical Council in Ireland, um, which frames, I mean, some of the work with students in the university um, uh, in, in the College of Medicine and Health. Um, so a number of the key words there map on very, very well um, to community engagement. So. Um, engaging in community-based research and community-based based learning is also a key way to kind of realise some of the educational outcomes um, that are expected in terms, in terms of students, particularly around the kind of social and psychological basis of health, to be able to communicate effectively, working with community partners really involves a high level of community engage engagement. It involves working in a multidisciplinary way, a real community-based understanding of what ethics is all about. Um, that you only can get when you get away from, from book work, um, and how to be able to manage time and resources effectively, and also health promotion and disease prevention, and doing that in partnership with communities as opposed to kind of on communities um, is, is kind of the unique learning opportunity that community engagement provides. Um, and also the teaching of others. So working in collaboration with others um, involves co-teaching and co-learning together. So it's a really, really um, important way of being able to realise these, these educational outcomes and possibly to, to structure programmes around. Um, so maybe let's break it down a little bit now and talk a little bit about, um, because often people get confused about the difference between community engagement, learning, research. Um, so I just want to break those down a little bit and talk through them. Um, so, you know, some of these resources um, that explain civic and community engagement are available on the Campus Engage website, and they've developed a number of great reports on there and a number of brochures that, that break these down and explain them, and I've provided those in the PowerPoint at the end, which will be hopefully forwarded to everyone. Um, so, community engagement 
is a mutually, mutually beneficial knowledge-based collaboration between higher education institution, its staff and students, and the wider community through a range of activities. So such initiatives that commonly reflect the norms and values of reciprocity, I can't say today, and diversity, and are often explicitly linked to social in inclusion. So uh, what's meant there is about a reciprocal relationship between the university and, and the community, not the university going out to act upon communities, but to work in, in collaboration with them. So it's a way of doing higher education. It's not ancillary to it. Um, so this is one of the key things um, in that example of Simon Fraser University where the president talked about restructuring the entire university around community engagement. This is a way of doing um, all of the activities of higher education across teaching, research and service. Um, in teaching it's community engaged learning, research, community engaged research and service public engagement. So community engaged research is a collaborative approach to research that equitably involves all partners in the research process and recognises the strengths that each partner can bring. It's undertaken by students with and for community partners. It's embedded in the curriculum and involves academic credit. Community engaged learning is a little different. So um, this is maybe where there's not explicitly research involved, but there's a, a course module involved that has an experiential learning component or the entire module is orientated around experiential experience-based learning. It's embedded in the, uh, in the curriculum, it's for credit. Um, global local citizenship is a core value. It's focused on the not-for-profit or voluntary sector and integrates theory and practice. Importantly, there's a reflective arc between the university part and the experiential learning part. So reflection is the key element of it. In terms of both of them, the idea is that the relationship with the community partner should not be transactional. So in transactional relationship, the community is a recipient or a subject of the partnership. Transformative, though, um, for the students involved, involves deeper understanding or empathy, developing civic skills and a sense of agency. And for the community, it involves questioning and changing circumstances, conditions or values or beliefs um, that are there in society's needs. Um, so there's a number um, of, of kind of uh, uh, partnership types one could think about. One is where the partnership between the university and the community, whether it's community-based research or community-based learning, um, is kind of a service type relationship. So you're providing a service over fixed time and there's a fixed task involved. It involves an element of exchange. There's an exchange of information for mutual benefit. Um, more ideally, you'd like to think about it as more of a cooperative relationship, the shared responsibility. And more ideally, again, it's about a transformative, transformative relationship, so the shared decision making. And the idea is to transform students and also help transform um, the community and the community needs. So this is more kind of a democratic view of partnership that's strengths-based or assets-based, it's relational, contextual, involves the co-creation of knowledge. So the academic institution becomes part of the landscape of community problem solving rather than exerting expert or academic knowledge. So there's a multi-directional flow of knowledge between the two, ideally. So kind of to summarize that, so engagement is primarily a method of teaching and learning. It's not necessarily a form of service. Okay, so the idea is that it's a method of teaching and learning it involves interacting with others outside the academy with an intent that our interactions are of mutual benefit. So better teaching and learning and research outcomes and greater community capacity and improved quality of life um, for the community. So it's not done without a strong underpinning pedagogy. So um, there's lots of variations of, of community engagement, um, but the kind of the type that's been um, hopefully we're promoting at UCC um, and definitely through some of the kind of national strategies, is that there should be a strong kind of underpinning um, pedagogy, um, ideally a participatory um, pedagogy. So this involves a move away from kind of an elitist academic view of research and learning to a more democratic one. It's linked to notions of participation as empowerment, social capital and addressing equal opportunities. So this is familiar to many of you um, in the area of public health and epidemiology is increasingly used. So the difference between the two approaches, um, how does community participatory research differ from traditional research? 
Um, so it involves a, a move away from expert doing research on community and community as subjects, or even interpreting um, participants, in, so interpretations of participants in research been valued. It's a move towards participants having a level of ownership over the research. It's collaborative, it's equitable, it recognizes the unique strengths that each bring, begins with a research topic of importance to the community and involves knowledge with action. So one of the important things is recognizes that community organizations are experts on their community culture and on their own, on their own health needs. Okay, so I've, I've you know, presented a table there, which when you get the slides, you can look through in your own time that kind of shows that kind of comparison um, between the two. So one, one of the important things about people, you know, that you learn when you engage in community-based search and community-based um, learning is that it's really important for communities to identify the problems and also to help develop the solutions. So the kind of shared decision-making power is really at the heart, heart of it and that the shared dissemination of, of data, but ultimately with a goal towards building community um, capacity. So that is the idea behind participatory research, in that there's a dual focus. Yes, the research is important in understanding um, and developing understanding, but it's also about building capacity. So in the examples we showed earlier um, around postnatal depression and eating disorders, the idea there is that those community organizations that were involved, yes, there was a greater understanding evolved of the issues that they were concerned about, but also their capacity to address those issues was enhanced. Um, so the idea is also kind of the reduction of dependence. So participatory research is an important means of building people's capacity and reducing their, their dependence on outside professionals and experts. So kind of dependence is a subtle process which makes people feel disempowered, but participatory research seeks to de-elitize it demystify research, thereby making it an intellectual tool which people can use for life and improvement. So, um, you know, um, wh when you engage in it, what, what, what happens is that the participants and the folks that you're working with ideally become co-researchers and their knowledge and their input, their insights becomes a really, really valued part of the, of the research. And it's also about that kind of transfer of skills from the researcher to the participants and that they learn the kind of research process so that when they can repeat it themselves, uh, maybe in a different way, um, but it enhances, enhances capacity. Okay, so, you know, we said earlier um, that time um, is a crucial thing in terms of doing um, community-based research. So building strong community partnerships takes time, attention and reflection. And it, it really takes a level of infrastructural support within a, within a university to kind of help make it happen. Um, so some of the very basic things that can happen when you have a whole university engaged in community-based research, people are out making and forging all sorts of research partnerships. So communities over time can end up in kind of research to death in some ways. Um, and also there's a lot of competition over the same partners. So it, it takes a level of cohering and it takes a level of in, infra, infrastructure support. Also, kind of on the um, on the education side, community-based research is not easy. It, it takes it takes a long time um, for people to kind of understand it and develop expertise in it. And the university needs to be able to provide that kind of infrastructural um, support. So, fortunately, um, at UCC, um, there is a sign shop program, um, which is otherwise known as the Carl program. But maybe let's talk about it in terms of a sign shop first. So. Sign shops are one way, and these are across a lot of universities in Europe. Um, actually, there's a worldwide network of sign shops. Um, so it began in the Netherlands, and almost every university in the ne Netherlands has a sign shop. But Australia, Canada, um, in Ireland, it began um, here at UCC in around 2007, and in UCD, also Queen's University in Belfast as well. Um, so s sign shops promote participatory research. Um, based in the university, and they provide independent participatory research support in response to requests made by community and voluntary groups. And the Living Knowledge um, uh, website is a great place to go and get more information about sign shops and what they're all about. So, um, Carl is UCC's version of the, of the sign shop. Um, Carl has been around um, 
since 2007, but some of that was planning. It began in earnest around 2010. Um, and there's been a very, very slow kind of, but gradual and strong development of the program. Um, 50 research projects to date with 39 community voluntary organizations, um, a range of different disciplines here at UCC, and a range of different um, community partners um, across, the, across the Cork and Munster region. It's directed by a faculty steering committee here at UCC, staff of one, time, one full time research support officer and two part time research coordinators. And as I said, we followed the, the sign shop model. So the aim of the Carl Sign Shop is to enable the university to make a contribution to the local community through research and learning via students and staff, provide community and voluntary groups with a friendly point of access to the knowledge and expertise within the university, and give students practical experience in an area where they may, may seek work, potentially enhancing their employment prospects. Um, so the, behind it is a very strong commitment to scientific research, qualitative and quantitative. Um, the results are made public. And the results have to be relevant to a wide, wider, uh, applicate wider group of people than just a group requesting the, the research. Um, it has to be the community partner should be able to use the results. Um, the questions that have been investigated should not be for commercial purposes. And it's only, we only engage with partners who cannot otherwise afford research, mostly community um, and voluntary groups and CSOs. Um, so we've worked out a very kind of detailed research process over time that's been built true trial and error, so there's a real comprehensive, strong approach behind to, behind to it. And the idea is that kind of the approach developed by Carl in terms of science shops um, is, you know, a natural kind of uh, platform for the university to kind of expand and to develop its, its uh, expertise in the whole area of community-based based research. Okay, so at another stage we should talk about community-based learning, but I want to leave, leave some time for um, some questions and discussion. Um, and maybe some questions about Carl itself and the process. Um, just to say, there's further information available on the Carl website, which is the bottom there. Um, my details are there if you want to follow up, talk about any of this. Um, I've also provided some basic resources there in terms of the Living Knowledge Network, the Campus Engage website, um, but also at UCC there's been a development of a community-based res participatory research module and all of the materials from that module, all of the readings, all of the, um, um, the course materials are up here on, on the website um, at that link. And I've included a number of articles around community-based participatory research. These are all seminal articles um, in the area of community-based um, participatory research as relates to medicine and health. Um, so I found the one there by Andrea Cornwall um, really particularly interesting. That was a, a key kind of article. Um, she works with John Gabanta and folks um, in England who have done a lot of work around participatory rural appraisal. So they have a lot of expertise in participatory research. Um, and there's some resource guides then um, that help with understanding this whole area on the Campus Engage website. Um, so I'll leave it at that. Um, that was a lot to blast you with in, in one, one sitting, but the PowerPoints will be available and I think we have about uh, 10 or 11 minutes or so for, for discussion and so we want to have discussion among ourselves not just asking me questions I'm quite quite open to that.